Buck Lavasser showed us the Upper Peninsula for over 30 years. It's time for a look back. It's time for Rediscovering. The bridge at Cold Deer, they do this, they do that. And that's another problem with everybody in Michigan right now. We have no respect for the DNR or the NRC. We have no respect for them. Over the weekend, a dozen concerned deer hunters, members of UP Whitetails of Delta, Marquette, and Keweenaw counties, met with Lieutenant Governor John Cherry and Senator Mike Prusey regarding the state of the UP's deer herd. I was really uh, happy to see so many of the sportsmen come together and, and voice their opinions in a little smaller uh, group setting than, than the big four or five hundred people in, in a large room. I, I think a small group of committed people can make things happen, can make some changes happen, and, and even though there's, there's divergence of opinion within that small group, uh, I think they're all focused on the same common goal and that's a better deer herd for all the sportsmen in the UP. Well, up next, we'll take a look at the meeting, and we'll learn that despite above normal temperatures this winter, ice anglers are still out trying, and I'll tell you the latest in the predator hunt phenomenon that's hit the UP in recent years. So stick around. It's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill Soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Hi everybody and welcome to Discovering. What a winter we're experiencing. You know, we got enough snow for snowmobiling and other winter activities, but the temperatures have been somewhat mild, which has had its effect on ice fishing, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But you know, it was nearly 50 years ago. If you hunted in Delta County, you probably ran across signs that looked like this. They were put out by the Save Michigan's Deer Herd Association of Escanaba. They were very concerned about the unregulated doe hunting that was taking place at the time and it had a great effect on the deer herd. It took many years for the deer to recover. Well, you know they say what goes around comes around and now 50 years later, we're experiencing a similar situation where people are very unhappy with the deer herd and the way deer are being managed. Well, we saw that at a protest a couple of weeks ago in Marquette where 400 hunters showed up and expressed their feelings about this. And over the weekend at Michigan Tech University, some of those hunters involved in that protest were able to sit down with Lieutenant Governor John Cherry and Senator Mike Prusey to tell them all about what they feel about deer management and the deer population and where we're going. Take a look. <music> It was Winter Carnival weekend in Houghton, and while hundreds of visitors were enjoying the snow statues, a meeting was taking place inside between members of UP Whitetails of Delta, Marquette, and Keweenaw counties, and Lieutenant Governor John Cherry and Senator Mike Prusey. The subject? The management of whitetail deer. I think you're here today to kind of give me a sense of, uh, of uh, some of the important concerns that uh, you and people you represent have. And with that, who would like to get started? Well, John, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking the time, really, 
even though being close to Escanaba would be a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half hour run. But <clears throat> overall, I think our main concern is the herd. Everyone here actually has some major concerns as far as the deer numbers we've been given and what's going to happen in the future. The meetings I attended in Escanaba, uh, these people uh, attended the meetings in Marquette and stuff. But it's great to say you want to see a 50% increase in the deer herd. But how are we going to get there? And we're kind of left holding the bag. And from past practices, don't get me wrong, I have a lot of friends in the department and on the commission. But as I stated at the meeting in Escanaba, I don't see how we are going to maintain what we have, let alone increase that herd by 50 percent. The subjects brought up varied from the DNR's Deer Population Goal Initiative to problems with the Deer Range Improvement Program and the state's freeze on spending that money. Money that should go to purchasing critical winter yarding habitat in the Upper Peninsula. On the west side we've only got about 600 acres put aside. There's two particular parcels that are critical deer habitat based on the migration of deer. The deer north of 28 usually migrate up towards Big Bay. The deer south of 28 migrate down towards northern Menominee County. There's over 2,000 acres of property called the Vega Track that was primary deer habitat that was up on the block and we lost it because of the pricing. Then comes Big Bay, which is still on the block, and we can't get it landed. They're going to have to go outside the box a little bit as far as more than the appraised value because the landholders know they've got a jewel on their hands and they're, they're, they're fighting it. We have a problem in Lansing within the DNR as to who's holding the purse strings and letting it work and do they understand the complexity of the issue. We need to do something and, the, and this department needs to step forward and listen more to the sportsmen that are out there in the woods and the guys that are paying the bills. And, and you know, they give us a lot of, a lot of lip service, and they have for many years, but we need action now. We're at a time in, in our history of the deer herd in the UP again, where we're headed steady downhill, and like Snuffy said, they want to raise uh, the deer population by 50% in the mid-snowfall zone. Up here in the UP, they go by the high snowfall zone along Lake Superior, mid-snowfall zone, it goes through about the central part of the UP, and a low snowfall in, in a, a lower part of the uh, Upper Peninsula. The mid snowfall is only want to raise the deer herd by 50%, and the high snowfall is only want to raise it by 10%. Well, they can't even, we can't even maintain what we've got right now, let alone raise our deer numbers, without them doing some things like shortening the seasons, possibly going to one buck for a few years. The legislature needs to give the, the, the control of deer numbers and how many deer you can take back to the DNR, with oversight from the state legislators in case the DNR does something that they shouldn't be doing, which they've done in the past. But I think the deer numbers, like there's a combination license out there that needs to be thrown out the door. And that has to be done legislatively. And we want, we, we would like to see that license gone. We went to the Berrigan meeting and I think Tim described it, our, our meeting, that's why he went in Berrigan. They listened. Bob Decker and Rob Aho put on an excellent presentation and explained the indices and the way the trends are. And, mm -hmm. and we went in with the, with the position, we're not going to argue with the numbers. The trend is right. We all we all see the deer herd coming down, and and finally we just presented them with a letter and says thank you. Um, leave us alone. The big issue for us is can we feed them? And I would like to thank Mike for the work that he did a couple of years ago. Mike, that was a real critical issue for a lot of us. I mean, it was right here in the heart. I'll tell you. And uh, we, yeah, and we and we won. And and. That was our big issue, and as long as we can feed them, we've got all the deer we can handle, and in, in area 042, we're extremely happy. Yeah, but, but my can point is, is you better pay attention to what the DNR's goals are for your level, because if they're telling you that your deer numbers are three times what they actually are, and then you cross that certain plane, they're going to start shooting those up in your area. We understand yeah. that. Yeah. So I think you need to make sure that you spend some time together to figure out what those points of consensus are so that you can I mean so that you can drum beat in these are the five points we all believe the department needs to do to move the pop you know to move forward on this population question 
I mean, I, I guess what, what I'm bothered about what I've heard today is that, I mean, I, I would hope the department would come and ask your opinion. I would hope that they were doing that because they're trying to construct a plan. I would have hoped that when they ask your opinion that they would tell you that when they use it or fail to use it that they're going to come back to you with what they have put together and have you react to it. I mean, it, it sounds like you don't have a clear sense of where they're headed. You can guess because you see them doing certain things and that causes red flags to go up and, and, and probably causes more concern perhaps than was necessary, but what else are you going to do because you don't know where they're headed? Um, but we'll you know, have to go back and talk to them. Now I know that politically you can go back and perhaps generate some things. What can the lieutenant governor do? Well, the, uh, the administration uh, does a lot of the hiring and firing at the upper levels of the department, and, and I think they, they can get into the upper management in the DNR and uh, indicate, look, there's a problem. Uh, we've got good people that have solutions for that problem. It's time to start listening to them and acting on the proposals that uh, sportsmen and, and women on the ground uh, have come up with because they're in the woods, they see the deer herd a lot more than someone sitting behind a desk in Lansing does. So uh, they, need, they need to be told from someone of John Cherry's position, start to take some action on these proposals because they make a lot of sense. What would your reaction be if, and I hope it doesn't come to that, that there is a significant boycott of licenses? What would happen to that department's funding, where would they get money to maintain themselves? Oh, there would be a, there would be a tremendous slowdown in activity in the DNR's programs and in their personnel uh, because the license revenue is a significant amount of uh, the money that comes in to fund that department and, and all the programs they operate. So if the if if it comes to the point where they actually decide they need to boycott and, and stop buying these deer hunting licenses, uh, that'll be a wake up call that can't be ignored. Are you optimistic that something can come from this, or was this? Kind of a wasted trip. It wasn't a wasted trip because we got the point across that the starting figures on the deer numbers are wrong. We got that point across and the implementation of their new plan they have out there they don't know how they're going to do it yet. They got a plan but they don't know how they're going to do it. We got that point across and we did get the point across that 70, 80, 90 percent of the people in UP and northern lower Michigan are very dissatisfied with the game right now. Well there's one sure thing the deer hunters in the Upper Peninsula have gotten the attention of Lansing. Up next, sites fishing across the UP and more predator hunts on the horizon. Stay tuned. Be sure to check out the 906 Outdoor Show, Sunday mornings at 7 Central, 8 Eastern on Fox UP. Welcome back to Discovering. Well, like we said earlier, you know, milder temperatures have taken some of the ice fishing areas that we're so familiar with out of the picture. For example, Keweenaw Bay is wide open. No ice fishing going on there. In fact, I had a report last week that there were 10 or 15 boats out there fishing for salmon and for lake trout, even as far as Point Abbey. Now that's way out there. That's usually covered with ice. But anyway, the situation has been tough and ice fishermen have been out looking for places. Even though there's slush on the ice, they're still out there with this incredible need to wet a line. Take a look. Well, normally at this time of year, anglers on Little Beta Nock near Escanaba are pulling out walleyes like this. But this year, the lack of ice has sent many anglers packing for the inland lakes. Here at Schweitzer Reservoir in Marquette, anglers are finding good ice, but lots of slush, making moving around looking for fish very difficult. Well, Ron, it's been one of those years out on the ice, hasn't it? Well, first ice was real good. <coughs> caught quite a few fish, and a couple of weeks ago, caught a nice mess of fish out on green uh, wood. Had Tim with me. Nice crappies. And the other day I caught a few fish out here on Schweitzer, but getting a lot of slush now. Getting almost knee deep when you walk out here. Oops, I just had a little tip here, but I wasn't paying attention. 
Well, that really puts the kiboshes the fishing, doesn't it, that uh, slush? That slush makes it hard to get around. It really does. So. But in a few weeks, we should start getting some of those thaws and that get rid of some of the snow and the slush on top of the ice and get, in the, get into March, and then it's kind of easy to get around. But so, I'm still looking forward to putting the boat in the lake. Oh, yeah. Well, it's get been so darn water. warm. You know, really, it's been a very warm year, and I'm surprised we got ice anywhere. Yeah, well, there's been a few days I had to decide, did I want to wear shorts out ice fishing or put on my wool pants? You know, it's never seen a winter like this one. Nice warm weather. And, and then came all that snow, which is yeah. what created all this slush. Yeah, you get the weight of the snow on the ice, and pushes the ice down, the water comes up through cracks and holes, and you get the slush. Well, there wasn't much happening out there on this day, but Ron promised to call me when things pick up. Meanwhile, hunters in Alger County were participating in the UP Whitetails of Alger County's first annual predator hunt. The problem was the coyotes were not moving this weekend. Uh, the weather, uh, the weather didn't quite cooperate with us. Mother Nature uh, rained on our parade a little bit, but you know, we uh, the whole inception of this was. We felt that the best thing we could do to help the deer herd is to do a predator hunt as far as UP whitetails of Alger County here. So uh, Frank and Lana from the Bear Trap, they've been helping us, supporting us since day one. Uh, they said to come on out, let's run it right out of here, you know. Uh, they got on board and helped out, donated a, a wildlife print. And a local guy in town does taxidermy work, uh, Rich Weaver. Um, he donated a, a life-size mount, and uh, the guys down at Rapid River Knife, who always helps every 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 sort of conservation cause, they gave me a knife to give away. So we had a, uh, it was a lot of support from people to come out and help us do this. And this being the first year, we just kind of thought we'd see what would happen with it. And I mean, I'm pleased with what people are saying about it, and they're glad that we're doing this. So. Hopefully, year after year, this is going to get a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. So, it's this is just kind of step one for us, and we'll go from there, I guess. Hopefully, next year we can get a little bit better weather. Maybe we can have a full moon so everybody can see it all night long. So, but I'm pretty pleased with what happened with it so far, and everybody seemed to have some fun doing it. So, would you support the idea of a network uh, coming together with all the groups so that you try to minimize conflicts and have one darn near every weekend all around the UP? I'll tell you what, if we could somehow work it out, that would, uh, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun if we could get everybody together and everybody pick a weekend and just go, go, go every weekend. Yes, that would be, uh, that would be entertaining. Chuck Johnson of Newberry, who along with his dad was the winner of the UP Predator Challenge, won the event with two coyotes. Well, the Copper Country will be the site of a long tournament beginning this week. Jake Anderson was the winner last year. That it is, the second annual, like you said. We hope to get some uh, hunters up like we had last year. It's a week long, 10 day long hunt now from the 17th, I believe, through the 26th. And the 26th is a Sunday. It's advertised as the 27th being the, the party, the, the bring in your game registration thing, but it's actually on Sunday. It'll be at the Tamarack Inn again in Copper Harbor. Bring your predators up. If you don't want the predators, if you don't have any use for them, there'll be ha there's people there that will take them that are looking for extra pelts. Like myself, I need four of them, all right? Hopefully I'll get four, but if I don't, I'd like somebody to donate whatever. Uh, we're gonna have good food once again. It's a free free meal. You don't, all you have to do is be pre-registered. You have to be pre-registered and you have to be there to win. You must be present for our drawings. We have drawings, raffles. We got a nice 17 cal with a three to nine variable scope on it. So it's gonna be given away. We've got another scope that's donated by the UP Whitetails Association also that's gonna be given away. We've got uh, Calumet Kivanaugh's donating some stuff that we've given away. I don't want to tell you what all we're giving away because, you know, that'd be some more surprise to you, you know, but we've got some very nice projects going on up there and we, we hope to get a lot of turnout for it. Is it still a bounty this year? Uh, we're going to still pay $5 a head and you get to keep the head. You don't have to sell if you don't want to or the, or the critter, so to speak. And all the DNR rules apply. Do not do anything other than what the DNR says. If you want to hunt by bait, that's good. If you want to call them, that's good. You know, and remember. If you want to trap them. And if you want to trap them, you can do that too, you bet. 
remember you can't use a center fire rifle after dark. You know, that's one of the main things they preach. So you gotta go rim fire 17 cal, 22 mag, whatever the case is for a rim fire rifle. You can't you can't use a center fire rifle after dark. Okay, now people that would like to register, they could call you at what, 906-289-DIVE? Uh, yep, 289-DIVE, that's my shop now. Or you could call 289-4259, that's my home phone number. Okay, also and you could call the Tamarack Inn. Or, or you can also in call the Tamarack Inn, that is area code 906-289-4522. Is the phone number at the Tamarack Inn, ask for Bill, and he can take care of you if you want to register by phone. There are some registrations out in the paper that I don't know, and you can Xerox it. If somebody has one you want to Xerox it, feel free to do so. Again, that's February 17th through the 26th in beautiful downtown Copper Harbor. There's also a hunt in Kenton, February 23rd through the 26th, sponsored by the Ontonagon Valley Sportsman's Club. You can get more information by calling 906-988-2233. Well, finally tonight, I know you heard over the weekend that Vice President Dick Cheney was involved in a hunting accident in Texas. He accidentally shot one of his hunting partners, sprayed him with a little bit of birdshot. Well, that can happen. Here in the Upper Peninsula, we have such a wonderful hunter safety program that you very rarely hear about that happening. But it can happen. You know, when you're hunting with a group of people, whether it be bird hunting, whether it be driving deer, you have to be a synchronized group of folks. And anybody that steps out of that synchronization allows themselves to be possibly involved in an accident, and that's what occurred here. But what I'm really surprised with is the national news media reporting that Vice President Dick Cheney shot the man with buckshot. Well, if he had shot him with buckshot, we'd be possibly talking about a funeral. The news media is totally clueless when they report these things, the difference between buckshot and birdshot. So I think we ought to take some of these news media people out and maybe give them a little shot in the rear end with rock salt. Then they'll know the difference between buckshot and birdshot. So the next time you hear a story where they call a semi-automatic a machine gun, just take that story with a grain of salt. Until next week, this is Buck Lavasser saying be safe out there but enjoy the great outdoors.